Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to enlarge objects inside of a photo using GIMP. I'm using GIMP version 2.10.24 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, check out DaviesMediaDesign.com. I have tons of video tutorials on here as well as free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member, and you can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here's the composition we'll be creating for today's tutorial. I've enlarged the skateboarder here in the photo. If I come back over here, this was the original, so as you can see, the skateboarder was significantly smaller here. So there's an after. So let's start this process off over here on the original image. And you can start by duplicating the original if you want a copy of the original, but that's not necessary. But next what I'm going to do is trace the main object in my photo that I want to enlarge. So I'm going to come over here to my foreground select tool inside the third tool group here. And I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. I do want to point out that if you have a complicated background behind your object, you may just want to use the paths tool to trace around the object you want to enlarge. But in this case, you can see that the background is pretty plain, so we can go ahead and use the foreground select tool. So first I want to check my settings over in the tool options here. Feather edges is going to basically give this a soft edge once it's done. So if you don't want a soft edge, you want a pretty hard edge here, you can either turn this off, or in my case, I'm going to just turn this down a bit, maybe just go to 1. The stroke width I'll get into momentarily. I'm just going to make sure the engine is set to matting 11. And I'm going to hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel a bit. And I'm just going to very loosely trace the outline of my main subject. And I'm just making sure that I'm not overlapping the actual subject because we're selecting the background right now. Right there I was a little close, but that's okay. I'm going to hit the Enter key. So everything that is dark blue is the background, light blue is the foreground. So now we're going to make sure we're in Draw Foreground mode, and I'm going to adjust my stroke width. I can either use the slider here, use the arrows, or use the left and right bracket keys on my keyboard. And now I'm going to hold Control zoom in with my mouse wheel. And I'll click on my composition to paint the foreground. So there you'll see that this is no longer highlighted at all. So that's indicating that is a foreground area. And I'll just use the left bracket on my keyboard to decrease the size of my brush. And just make sure we get the hands here. And release. And then I can increase my brush size, hold control, zoom out a bit and just paint the areas that I want to designate as the foreground. Hold control zoom out. So once we get to these larger areas, it becomes a little easier to do this. So I'm going to increase the size of my brush using the brackets. And hold control zoom in, make sure this is connected here. And I can also use the space bar as a sort of hand tool to move over on the image. All right, so once we have loosely painted the foreground portion of the image, let me just get this part right here. Now all I have to do is hit the Enter key. And there you can see this has computed that this is our foreground and this is all the background. Of course, it didn't do this part right here. So all I need to do is go to draw background and we're just going to loosely paint in the background here. And release. And we'll do the same right here. We'll just paint this little area in. And if you want to refine some parts, you can always hold control, use your mouse wheel to zoom in and just paint any areas this might have missed. All right, so once we are happy with that, let me just do one part right here. Once we're happy with that, we're gonna hit the Enter key again. 
And that is going to select our foreground object here, which is going to be our skater. And now what I'll do is I'm gonna cut this from the original image. So I'll hit Control X. I do want to mention that basically the main goal is to just create a selection area, a detailed selection area around your main foreground object or your main subject here. And once you've created that selection area, you're going to cut it out the way we just did. So control X to cut and we'll go to edit, paste in place. So that's going to paste this as a floating selection layer. And what we want to do is add this to its own new layer. So we're going to click the create a new layer icon here. And now you'll see our skater is on its own layer. Now what I'll do is hit shift S on the keyboard to grab the scale tool. So you can also grab it here from the toolbox. And we're scaling up so we'll keep the interpolation set to no halo. And also make sure the transform mode is set to layer. And now we're just going to click and drag the handle and also hold the control and shift key. So the control key will scale it from the middle. The shift key will maintain the original aspect ratio. And I can release my mouse, hold control, zoom out with my mouse wheel. And you can make this as large as you want or even small. And you can also use the little middle part here to reposition this if you want. And once you're ready, come over here and hit scale. And now our skater here has been scaled up. The main issue is that behind the skater, you can see where we cut it out. So what you can do is come over here and just click on the original image. And I'll hit the H key or come over here and grab the heel tool. And I'm going to come over here to the tool options and make sure sample merged is unchecked. That way we're only grabbing pixels from the original image layer. And then what I'll do is use the right bracket on my keyboard to increase the size of the brush head. Hold control and click on an area of the sky. And my alignment down here, by the way, is set to none. But now we can just paint these areas right here. And if you have a less complicated background, this should be pretty easy. So there you can see we painted that. And we're also just sort of painting the seams to make sure that you can't see any seams from the areas that we healed. And let me hold control and click over here. You can also change the area that you're sampling from to make it look more realistic. That looks pretty good there. So now what I wanna do is sort of clean up some of the feathering that's going on here. As you can see, if I hold control and zoom in, you can see parts of the trees behind here. So what I'll do is click on that skater layer and I'm gonna hit the C key on my keyboard or grab the clone tool from my toolbox. And I'm just going to decrease the size of this. And you wanna make sure you have a fairly hard brush. In this case, it's set to 75, which is probably gonna be fine. And again, the alignment is set to none. So now I'll hold control and click to grab an area from his shirt here, or these might be his pants. And hold control, zoom in. And I'm just gonna paint along the feathered area so this part's kind of optional depending on whether or not you had feathering and how the feathering sort of interacts with the original background. But as you can see, it's helping to fill in some of these gaps here. And this is probably fine having these gaps because light does naturally go through clothes. But I just think in this case, it's doing it a bit too much. So I'm just cleaning it up. And we can come over here, hold control, zoom in. So that looks pretty good there. Let me just click off of here. And I'll also grab my move tool. So if I shift click, that'll hide all the other layers. There's a before, shift click, there is an after. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.